When the internet is good, it's a powerful tool for communicating complicated ideas across geographical barriers and economic barriers. But when the internet is really good, it does much more than that. It harnesses the power of the entire collective consciousness of humankind, all of our varying skill sets and compartmentalized knowledge, and it becomes something greater than the sum of its parts. This would be things like Wikipedia, which, for my money, is as much of a testament to human achievement as the Great Pyramids of Giza. But when the internet is at its best, is when it does all of these things, but not for money, not for some lofty ideals like the betterment of mankind, but for the best purpose of all, just for the hell of it. And the story I'm about to tell you is one of the craziest and weirdest things that I've ever experienced on the internet, which is saying a lot. Now to understand this story better, you need to understand where it came from. Like most good stories on the internet, it started out on Reddit, also called the front page of the internet. I'm sure most people out there are familiar with Reddit, but just for the few people who aren't, Reddit is a vast network of interconnected communities. Imagine something that's sort of a mix between Wikipedia in the fact that all of the articles are linked to each other, and the old message board systems that we used to use in the early days of the internet. But the thing about Reddit is, people on there are some of the snarkiest and also hyper-intelligent people, and they're really, really dedicated to being good Redditors, or good interneters. Here's an example of the type of shenanigans that people get up to on Reddit. A couple of years ago, a community appeared called Pun Patrol. Members of Pun Patrol would scour all of the various other communities on Reddit and the comment threads looking for people making bad dad jokes or puns. In some cases, these people would volunteer themselves to be quote unquote arrested, where they would go back to the pun patrol board and have a badge of flair attached to their name showing that they had been arrested for bad puns. From this spun another community called Pun Resistance. Members of the Pun Resistance would gather secretly en masse and they would storm the board of Pun Patrol, making as many puns as they could in a short amount of time, and then leaving before anybody would be caught. This began the great pun wars. But the pun wars were not without their rules of engagement. Like this from the Pun Patrol. No conducting arrests in designated pun zones, which consist of the following, r slash puns, r slash dad jokes, and r slash punny. Of course, not all Pun Patrol officers followed their own rules, which led to the community Pun Internal Affairs. In Pun Internal Affairs, Pun Patrol officers would be audited to see if they were worthy to continue doing their duty. This led to various other communities spinning off, for example, Pun Special Forces, or my personal favorite, the Pun KGB who would skip all of the red tape and simply throw offenders straight into the gulag. Unfortunately, Pun KGB spent most of their time trying to convince people that they were not a sub for punks in Great Britain. Now as fun and funny and weird as all of this is, it's nothing compared to what I really want to talk about today. Something called the button. On April 1st, 2015, Reddit users were greeted with the following page, a simple sparse layout that was simply labeled the button. On this page, there was a small lock icon. Clicking this would reveal a blue button that could be clicked. And next to that was a wheel and a timer ticking down from 60. The rules to the game were even more cryptic. The timer will count down from 60 seconds. If the button is pressed, the timer will reset to 60 seconds and continue counting down. You may only press the button once. We can't tell you what to do from here on out. The choice is yours. Important to note here 
is that it doesn't give any explanation at all what will happen if you push the button. Or more importantly, what will happen if the timer reaches zero. Users were quick to notice one thing, however. When you do push the button, a colored flare will be displayed next to your username. This is permanent and impossible to change. Now the internet responded to this exactly as you might expect. They lost their minds. Within a week, people were making all types of analytic and tracking software, including three Android mobile applications, seven Chrome browser extensions, YouTube live streams, dedicated Twitter accounts, and within Reddit itself, it spun off over 180 new subreddits, including r slash church of the button, r slash assassins of the button, r slash antipresents, r slash button theory, and r slash buttons gone wild. But all of these analytical software packages and applications didn't answer one important question. What do the colors mean? Pretty early on, one clever Redditor actually cracked open the CSS style guides and realized that colors of flare were assigned to users based on how much time it took them to click the button. And this corresponded more or less to the visible spectrum of light, with purple being the shortest wavelength or the shortest amount of time it took to push the button, and red being the longest wavelength or people who waited the longest. For example, people who never pushed the button, whether by choice or by default, were given a gray piece of flare. However, if they clicked the button in the first 10 seconds, they would be given purple. If they clicked it in the first 20 seconds, they would be given blue, and so on. As soon as people realized that these pieces of flare actually had something to do with when and how they clicked the button, Reddit again lost its mind. Immediately, communities started to appear, like the Sun Guardians or the Illuminati, the Middle Way. These are people who didn't push too quickly, but they also didn't wait too long. Other groups would be the Blessed Innocent, who never pushed the button because they didn't know about the game, or the Emerald Council, or the Blutherhood. Each of these communities had their own flag, their own articles of incorporation, their own logo and mascot. Here's a map that one Redditor made to show all of the various affiliations and allegiances. Notice that each color has several different communities divided by their philosophical approach to why they arrived at that color. For example, the Blessed Innocent. These people are gray, but only because they've never even heard of the game. Compare that with the Grey Hopeful. These are people who believed that this game was a test, and that all of the people who resisted the temptation to push would be rewarded with Reddit gold when the game was complete. I probably don't have to point out how similar this is to many religions in the real world that believe that acting good in this life will give you rewards in the next life. A similar group was the followers of the shade. These people were essentially ascetics that believed that it was their job to prove their moral fortitude by watching the button approach zero and resist the temptation to press it. There are even examples of people in the real world who overcame addiction and other types of compulsive behavior because they played this game. But not every follower of the shade was able to resist temptation. For some users, when the counter got down below 10 seconds, they found it impossible to resist, which put them in the next category, the Red Guard. This is the most elite and exclusive community, won only by patience and diligence. Also in the Red category are the Knights of the Button. These are people who seek to keep the game going as long as possible by sacrificing themselves when the clock gets dangerously low. The Knights of the Button set up a complex matrix of all of the various users all around the world that would stand guard in shifts, and any time that the button got dangerously close, they would sacrifice one of their members. 
Then there were the hitchhikers, people who tried to push the button at exactly 42 seconds. This, of course, is an allusion to the book Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And 42, as you might recall, is the meaning of life. Some people believe that Douglas Adams was not simply making a joke here, but trying to make a strong point. And that point is that no matter how sophisticated any species becomes, we will never escape the ultimate meaninglessness and chaos of life. There were also the Holy Order of the Primes. Now this could be in any color, but they tried to click the button exactly on a prime number as a way to seek the mathematical purity and beauty of prime numbers. Not only were all of these various communities based on personality type created, but several strange religions and cults actually spun off of this as well. For example, the Church of the Button. The Church of the Button worshipped user power language as the creator deity for creating this whole game and testing his followers. They believe that salvation is possible for all believers in the button, regardless of color. Here's an example of some of their scripture. And behold, a certain non-presser stood up and tempted you slash power language, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit the best flair? He said unto him, What is written in the sidebar? How readest thou? And answering said, Thou shalt press the button but once, and thy account must needs be created before 2015-0401. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. If you look at the link below, you'll notice that there's a whole lot more of this scripture where this came from. Another strange cult was the 60s. Now the interesting thing about 60 is that you can't really click it by yourself. Somebody has to click the button right before you. In other words, a 60 can't be achieved by work alone. It can only be given to you. This made the 60s call themselves the master race or the chosen people. But they also believed that a 60 neither resets the clock nor does it allow the time to run out. Therefore, 60 is sort of a yin-yang, balance to the force type of situation. They followed the prophet, you slash the button. And I should point out here that you slash the button existed before the game. Here's an example of a thread from the 60s. Now notice all of the purple flare next to these usernames. All hail you slash the button. Praise him. Praise the Lord. The Messiah is a fellow 60 or tis true. We are the master race. History will be written by the victors. History is full of 60s. Praise you slash the button. 60s. The 60s will inherit Reddit. Towards the end of the game, there was also a lot of talk of the coming of the Presiah. This group was sort of a doomsday cult that believed that one day the button would end and the last person to press the button would be the Presiah. They claimed that he would be heralded by John the Taptist, as prophesied in the New Testament. On June 25th, the timer finally did reach zero, and the prophecy was fulfilled by a user named U slash Big Goron. Here's an example of a thread. Pressers and non-pressers unite. We are the children of the button. Only by finding peace amongst ourselves will the one true Presiah be revealed. Up until this point, it's mostly just a bunch of fun. But the button started to take a toll on people in the real world as well. Take a look at this thread. This is from a user who was complaining about people at their office and what their button preferences were. The first bit of advice is time to look for a new job. And take a look at this comment. Do you really think a bunch of early button pressers are going to make good business decisions? Now notice here that the person's flair is gray, meaning that they never push the button. Now take a look at the response from a purple user. How else will you grab opportunity? Followed by, usually by waiting longer than a single second. Now this 
actually speaks volumes to how people identified within the game. Purple users identified themselves as being open and optimistic and trusting. Red users considered themselves to be hardworking, people who were willing to put in the time and the effort to get what they wanted. They were achievers. Users with gray badges resisted until the very end. They considered themselves to be prudent and cautious. It really goes to show that some simple experiment like this, that has absolutely no meaning whatsoever to the outside world, can create all of this division, all of these different communities and religions and cults, and that people will attach themselves to almost anything, even something as meaningless as the button. Thank you.